Hey everybody, right. welcome to the uh, food Are class. Are you recording? Are you recording? Yes. Should be. <laughs> yes. Yep. Uh, welcome to the food class. This is assignment number two where we're looking at point of view, uh, how things look from different points of view with your camera. This is, these images are Shivani's images uh, of uh, or sort of a, what is this, a festive uh, holiday uh, autumn thing. I don't know. This looks like a pumpkin um, and a pepper. This is going to be one spicy pumpkin uh, pie. That's all I got to say. With mushrooms, which I've never had. <laughs> really never had a pumpkin pie with mushrooms. But my God, what the heck. Let's give it a shot. Sarah's mouth is watering right now. I can see her up there going, ooh, let's get some poblanos. We'll go nuts. Um, yeah, and well, it's really interesting to see when you move your camera around, uh, and I know I, I asked you to do three, but choose two. Uh, when you move your camera around, things look differently, things light differently, as we know, but also things present much differently. We don't see any roundness uh, at, at, at the extent that we see here in the bottom one. We just see the roundness of the these uh, mushrooms. We see the roundness of the pumpkin. Up here, we see the top of it. We know it's round because we know it's a pumpkin. We don't have any distance between the pumpkin, the chili, and this chili. And down here, we can see that we certainly do. So your point of view from oblique to, to up, so you've got straight across, split the difference, and down. And the splitting the difference, that's what we usually call the comfort view of food, because uh, it's basically taken from the same angle as we would see the food if it was sitting in front of us on the table. Um, that comfort uh, shot is a little bit different than, than these, but this coming across at the food, that's like a five-year-old coming up to the table and looking at the table like this, go right across at it. Uh, it just spells different things for for the image. And I don't know if she changed the lighting on this or not, but if she didn't, you can certainly see how the light changes drastically and how it presents to the camera. Because up here, the camera's, the light is coming at a much sharper angle back to the camera than it is here coming down and over to the camera. So, very good. Okay. And hang on real quick. I got another one here. Is um hold on here. Um Mr. Maldonado, are you here? This shot? Um, okay, well, this is shot really obliquely. There's only one shot here. So it's shot pretty obliquely, and I'm not sure that um, I, he, the, the spoon and the fork, very interesting place that you put them. I think today, with, to, with modern, our modern sort of aesthetic, I would focus stack these because them being really out of focus is just totally disconcerting where if they were in focus, it would be so interesting. So interesting. Light looks good coming from the side. So I guess it's window light coming through here. I don't see anything else doing it. So it looks like I don't see a light there, so I don't know. And he's not with us today, so can't ask those questions. I think okay. I think um, I see a light stand by the I see the a light line. stand, but is there a I I don't know if there's a light up there. Maybe that's a collapse. Yeah, there's a light right up there. Yeah. What kind of what kind of light do you think it is, guys? 
mystery. No. I mean, that's it right there. It looks like uh, maybe it's got a. Light. It looks like a speed light. It looks like a speed light, or yeah. This speed big light, light. With a, uh, uh, with a with a yeah, soft box on it. Yeah, a little small soft box, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The um, the rectangular speed light, and it seems like he used the barn doors, diffusers. Could be. With Could be. Yeah, it looks like something like that. Something. And we can see that we can see the light coming down from this light up. Right. So it's very directional. And you yeah. see the, the shadows like the vignette. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yep, all under here. It's pretty sharp. Um, pretty sharp edge. And I think uh that, that's good. that's gonna tell us it's a speed light, but I I would guess he's got some little thing on attachment on the front, maybe a diffuser or something. Um the, the speed light's going to give you the hard shadow. The diffuser is going to break that shadow mm -hmm. edge, but it's also bouncing off a brown board, so it's hard right. to tell. All right, so let's get back over here. And we've got Shivani's, and now we go to uh, up to, where is that it? Yep. All right, assignment two. Here we go. Kit. Ishimaru Matsu. Kid, are you here? I'm here. Hi, Don. Hi. Look at the look at the totally different presentation. Isn't that, isn't that interesting? Um, I really I gotta tell you, I like the I like the lower one better. The top one has a lot of graphics going on. The circles with the with the persimmons in the middle, you know, this gradually circling coming out. It looks really great. I just absolutely love the way the light's presenting on the lower one. Did you, um, did you change the light or is this the same light? It's, it's the same light. I just kind of tilted that front persimmons up a little bit, but the light's exactly the same. Look how different the light present presents when we get that bounce. When we get that angle of incidence equals angle of Reflection, that soft light, soft lighter in the back of the persimmon coming right up to the camera. That's all of this beautiful stuff in here. Here, the light is same place, but we're coming down. So the reflection of the soft box, I do have the soft box in the right position, don't I, Kat? Yes. Yeah, I, the, the, the reflection of the soft box is still missing the camera. So we come down, there's no bright reflections on the persimmons. You know, a little bit right. Doesn't mean that it does, it's not wrong or right. It just is. It's a decision you make. This is stunning. I really like it. Yeah, thanks. I like the bottom one best too. Yeah. Well, there's something magical about the light there. Just think it's great. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Well, thanks. Yeah, well done. Stephen. Stephen, are you here? Oh, dang it. Okay. Uh, and the same things happen with Stephen. Even though Stephen is going from the side, we still have a highlight coming down from the top, and we have a highlight when he's doing the oblique angle here. Uh, presents a little bit differently. Um, this is Both of these shots work really well, Stephen. They both work really well. A little shallow depth of field um, here with these things, they're only things that are out of focus. Well, that's out of focus there. Um, I'm not sure I would, I'm not sure I would do that. I might bring it all into focus. When you're shooting down on it, you're going to have a much better chance of getting everything in focus than when you're shooting across at food, if that's, if that's an issue for you. Um, this gives us more an idea of what the food is. Yeah, yeah, six one half dozen the other. They're both they're both nice, um, Stephen. Uh, I would have darkened this background down to about there, just a little bit of a vignette just on the top, down to about there. Let that let it get lighter here at the bottom and get darker at the top, or darken it at the bottom and lighter at the top. But I think I would have gone darker up here, dark so that these, these things can come up into that darkness and give it more depth. This one looks really good. 
Very good. Uh, all right, all right. Warren, what is yes, this? What is this? Ginger. Ginger. Mac okay. Macro. Okay, so we're shooting across at the ginger here and down on it here. Yes. Okay. Well, I don't. I don't like all that out of focus. I just, I just don't think that works. It's too big of a mass here. Okay. You know, we've got this over here. We're not really sure what that is. That's got a nice highlight on it. Not just massive stuff being out of focus. Even over here, it doesn't, it doesn't guide our eye. This one, you've got the focus in here, pretty nice, right in here. But I still wonder, uh, and I do like your highlights, by the way, coming down from the top here. I still wonder if having this out of focus was a good choice. I'm not saying it's wrong, Warren. I'm just saying I'm not sure it's the, it's the right choice to make. I would love to see them side by side, one in focus, one not. But when you're coming in this tight on a piece of ginger and you're, you're really throwing half of the ginger out of focus, um, doesn't, doesn't sit right for me. What was your, you're using uh, ISO 150 millimeter prime 5.6? Probably should have been, I'm going to say probably should have been 11 or 16. When you're on a 20 millimeter extension, you bet you're going to have very shallow depth. Of view. You got somebody shut their mic on. Turn your mics off, please. We're hearing all kinds of talking. Yeah, if you're not if you're not chatting with me, make sure your mic's off. That way we don't hear traffic or everything else. Um, Warren, I don't think this is the, your best shot. Okay. Okay. All right. I will redo it and put another. Yeah, we want to. We want to. We want to taste that ginger. We want to feel it. You know, and there's not enough here to to pull us okay. in. Got it. All right. Good. Yeah, that's a pretty good sized ginger too. Oh, that hand of ginger was huge. Good grief. <laughs> All right, Jim, does Jim have two shots here? Or just one shot. Just, just have one shot. All right. Uh, Jim, I love your light, man. Well, thank you. That's, uh, there, there are hundreds of photographers in New York City who shoot exactly like this. It's, and you can see why, right? It's just um, absolutely gorgeous light coming back across your, your stuff here. Now, uh, you have direct sunlight on that, right? That's correct. Yeah, it's about eleven o'clock in the morning. Yep. So it's a little it's a little punchier than it would be if it was, um, you know, ambient light coming through. Uh, and look what it does. It's just the, the it's just gorgeous. Look at that beautiful highlight over here. The highlight on the rim here. All these rims are lit beautifully. We got a soft, super soft forward shadow. Who knows why it's super soft? Who knows? Julia knows. She's just not going to say it. Because of the scrim. Because, well, not just the scrim. What else? The cards on the side? The cards. The light is close to the subject. Light is close to the subject. It is, it's, well, where are we? The light is close to the subject and it's big. Yeah. It's a yeah. great big light. Add the two white cards to the side. We mitigate any depth to the shadows. We still have shadows. Dang it, I can't remember which side this thing's on. We still have shadows, but, but they're soft and they give us direction of light and they give us um, a really nice feeling. Uh, Jim, your focus issues are good here. You know, I sure would have hate hate, hated to lose that guy up there. He's nice and clean. That's nice and clean in here. A little bit off, but okay. Uh, perfectly clean. Um, can you all see what that what Jim has chosen as the hero is this this one right here? And the reason is he's cropped this one, he's cropped that one, he's cropped that one, and he's cropped the book. It's the only thing in the picture that's not cropped. Ergo, it's the hero. If you want to put something into your shot and have it stand out as the reason for the shot, don't crop it. Have you taken one of my classes before, Jim? I did the previous food tape, the food previous um, tabletop, tabletop class. Yeah. All right. So did we talk about the distance between 
the items on a shot like this? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, because I can see you're paying attention. Trying to, I was just trying to isolate it a little bit. Yep, but you're not isolating it too much. You've got it just right. These guys go together well. This one goes together well. This one goes together well over here. All of this fits beautifully uh, into the, the shot. And you don't have to worry about spacing that much because you've isolated it by cropping. So well done, sir. Well, thank you. You like shooting tabletop and, and food? Yeah. That's a, that's the only thing I do actually. I'm I'm oh. still a beginner. I'm still a beginner. Well good I I I you're a very good beginner. I, I think you're probably a little bit better than a beginner, but you're you know, good shooter. Good shooter. Uh, Alex Baker. Alex is, I'm sure, asleep. I'm not sure why Carmen isn't, but we'll, we'll deal with Carmen. It's, it's, it's actually gonna... a decent, it's a good hour here. It's oh, is it? Oh, okay. Yeah, it's it's, it's uh -huh. 6.30, 6.30. Oh, okay. Seven by now. Seven. Yeah, it's okay. So it's Alex, good. Alex is just out gallivanting around Spain. That's what she's doing. It's Saturday night, dude. Oh, that's yeah. right. That's right. Um, uh, Alex is a really fine shooter in in uh, Spain. These are beautiful. Wow, just gorgeous. Um, this really bright open light, Alex, is really cool. Really cool. I wish she was here to tell us what she did post wise because the post is so open and airy and incredible, and yet we've got all that color. Beautiful shot. And look at how different the light presents. Look at the light coming here. A little bit, um, I don't want to say flat, because it's not flat light at all. It's it's just not throwing a lot of shadows. And when we get over here, look at all the shadows we've got under here, because she's we've got all of this. It's This is more punchy and poppy than this is. And again, that doesn't make it wrong. Doesn't make this one better than that one, or this one better than that one. Just two ways of presenting the food beautifully on the, on the table. Uh, and this bleached wood is just great. Just great. Okay, Phyllis, is Phyllis here. here? Yes, I am. All right, so Phyllis is, what is this that you're showing us here, Phyllis? No, that's not mine. No, this one that, is. That's mine, that's a, a a creme brulee, flame on a creme brulee. Okay. Now, did you shoot it from a different angle as well or no? Um, well, I tried, but it didn't, um, I didn't submit it because it just didn't work. It just didn't work. And I, my objective here was trying to see how the flame would caramelize the sugar and then bounce mm -hmm. off the side of the dish again. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sorry I didn't, you know, here's I what, probably should have addressed the assignment a bit differently. Here's what you do. See the back of your board yeah. here? Yeah. All of this, we don't need to see. Okay. So when you do this again, right. you put your cup right up here. Then when your flame is coming out the other side, it's right. coming out against something dark. And we'll Thank see you. it. No, well, gotcha. We'll see it. Yeah, there's right. no... We don't need to see that much table. We just need to get this uh, this out. This will also work well. And are you 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 are using looks like three lights? No, if you go back, it's just a a, a little light that I have that I bounced off the wall. There are there are a couple of overhead under the counter. I shot it on a kitchen counter. Ah. So, so I have a couple of overhead, you know, that are under the counter lights coming down. You can yeah, see the yeah, three but they're giving you. Uh, those lights under the counter are are in your shot. They're yeah. giving you multiple um, shadows, um, right. which I don't think I don't think that helps your shot. I don't okay. think the multiple shadow here helps your shot. So what you want to do is turn all the ones under off and just use okay. the one. Okay. Just bounce this into a white card. Okay. Especially might be good to have a white card that's not that doesn't burn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> or be very, very careful. It is never good form to burn your house down taking a picture of creme brulee. 
it just I don't think so. <laughs> insurance company just not gonna not gonna go with it. So okay. all right, very nice. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks for the help. Mm -hmm. Ron. Hi Don. Hi Ron. How are you? I'm okay. And you? Good. Now these look like they're both shot at the same angle. Well, they probably are pretty close to the same angle. Okay. Um, yeah, I was kind of, um, uh, I don't know, this wasn't my best inspiration for, <laughs> for an assignment, so I'm, I'm not totally pleased with it, but um, it was uh, too late in the week to, well, to shoot over. But uh, no, it is it's gonna, close to the same angle. It, it is, I moved the light a little bit. Um, I'm going to somewhat, I'm going to somewhat disagree with you here in that you didn't do the assignment but there is certainly nothing wrong with either one of these shots. They're nice shots. Well, thanks. So, um, you know, you know, doing the assignments, one thing, but if you, you know, it's like, if you didn't do the assignment and you didn't do a good shot, that's a, that's, you know, that's two strikes. You didn't do the assignment, but you got two really, really good shots. This well, one's outstanding, just outstanding. Yeah, that was my um, that was my prize um, uh, of the of the effort. Um, I'd, I'd done the you know, the lower one first, and then kind of reset. And um, did you, it looks the, like um, you focus stacked the bottom one, maybe. I actually I focus stacked both of them, okay. um, but only part way up on the um, on, on the, the top. Upper. Of Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Well done. Well done, because it really that focus stacking down here really presents a a very unique look, doesn't it? Yeah, I it's think so. It's reminding me of uh, view cameras, you know, where we could tilt that that front down and get everything in focus like that. I really like it, Ron. And I, you know, the focus stack I'm just doing by hand. I mean, I'm just kind of, kind of mm -hmm. um, setting the uh, setting where I want the focus to be and manually focus, and I just keep moving up the image and. Uh, mm -hmm. Then you do it in Photoshop, put it in Photoshop? Then do it in Photoshop, yeah. 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 I was just, oops, I was just talking to a photographer who is a landscape photographer and he is focus stacking all his landscapes now, two to three images. And what a difference it's making. He's very excited about it. Uh, and he just does it the same way. He does the foreground, he does the background and he puts them together in Photoshop. This is very nice as well. This is your light. So you yeah, I had, uh, stuff here. I did, I had you know, taken the set down, but, um, and then remembered the behind the scenes. So I just kind of, uh, but that's, that's essentially what the setup was other than there was a white card to the right of the camera. Got it. Yeah. Really nice. And I love that one single light coming from the back. Um, did you, and on that one, I, um, flag it I, off a big, big fly. I, attached a big piece of black foam cord to the uh, scrim to cut the back, you know, the back end of the uh, light down a lot. Um, quite good. Quite good. Well, don't apologize for your shots. Apologize for not doing the damn assignment, Ron. Well, <laughs> but, but the shots are good. So. Well, thanks a lot. I appreciate yeah, that. Beautiful. All right, Julie. Yes. How are you doing? Hi, how are you? Okay, and you? Love, yeah, fine. I like I, what you, you brought so much emphasis to the tie here with the focus. That's very cool. Uh, yeah, I kind of liked. I liked it. <laughs> yeah, that's very cool. And your and your um, your little. I love the light on this side, going up mm -hmm. against the shadows of the, of the pitcher and the asparagus on this side. Very dark on this side. So the highlights are up against the dark part of the background. Uh, really nice, and you are using, is this your window or are you still on strobes? No, it's a window. There's a behind the scenes photograph. All right. Yeah, yeah sort of the thing. I mean, I have the extra stuff in the frame, but um, it's basically, it was surrounded by more of a dark lighting with the window on the right there. And you're you're using this uh, this guy to flag off your background, right? Keep it dark, uh, but the lights just slipping through and lighten this up right about there. Still starting to get a little lighter, yeah. Uh, which is cool because 
that gives us that beautiful Rembrandt look to the back of this. Yeah, I really, I like them both, Julie. Oh, well, thank you. Um, I think they, I think they, they look good together too. By the way. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. Very Thanks. nice. Judy Hernandez. Oh, Judy, that's a. Hi. Hi. Just is there just one shot? Yeah, just one shot. That's just Working really. Working those potatoes for a while. I finally cooked them. That's just a really pretty shot. Well composed too, by the way. Pardon? Love this coming right down in here, and you've got enough green down here that balances out that nice big bunch of green up there. Tomato tops look good. The wood looks good. All right, so tell us about this uh, little bit of sunlight coming in here. How clever that is, is that? I've been exploring all my windows since I started your course, and this is a, an east window, mm -hmm. and it's late morning. The sun's already over my garage, so it's not directly coming in. It's, it's from the side. So you can see that angle. You can see that it's hard too. The hard shadows. Yeah. Because I didn't use a, I didn't use a scrim or anything. I just used the window. The window is kind of damaged. It's got a kind of a. You can't really see through it because it's. I live by the coast, by the ocean. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of um, uh, the sea salt air has damaged it over the years. So. I see. So you do have. So you got a little bit of diffusion built into your home here. Window. Yeah. And, but it's still clear enough that the light is just coming through and you just grabbed a little corner of that light. Right. Right. It's coming. In. This is really cool. The and then I got up would, there at risk of breaking my neck. <laughs> the only thing that would suck would be a client that would call and say, Oh, I got to have this shot today and I can pay you a hundred thousand dollars for the shot, but it's four o'clock in the afternoon. Oops. <laughs> Well, you know, windows work great. They're all over the house, so. <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be outside throwing a strobe through it. <laughs> really, really pretty. It's just a pretty photograph Thank all you. the way around. Good job, Judy. Thank you. Really, really solid shot. Thanks. And I love the way you're, you're, you are exploring your windows. Great thing to do. Yeah. Thank yep. you. Yep. Nina. Yes, I'm. Hi, I'm Nina. Nina. How are you? I'm good, Don. How are you? Good. Are these... Potatoes? They are little mini ones. Oh, you got to tell me how do they taste? Do they taste like? They tasted potatoes? great. <laughs> I took them right from there and baked them, and they were really good. And do they taste like regular potatoes? Yeah, but there's some purple ones, and yeah, and oh, yes, yeah, so they're they're delicious. I got to get me some of these. These whole foods, <laughs> really yep. cool. Whole foods. Yep. All right. They're called fingerling potatoes. Done. Fingerling. Fingerling potatoes. Oh, cool. I could put some sausage in there and some mm -hmm. bell peppers. You could put it in a taco shell. Well, everything goes in a taco shell. That's, that's not new, Gene. Everything goes in a taco shell. <laughs> I bet they'd be good in a taco shell. You Ooh. got it right, Don. You got it right. Anything. I've had mashed potato tacos. It's not something I'm proud of, but it was... It was late in the day. Anyway, um, now what's your light? Do you have a behind the scenes? I do. Window. Just a window. Look at yeah. that big window. Look at a beautiful, beautiful view out your window. My goodness, that's stunning. It was very yellow this year. We had a gorgeous, a gorgeous, gorgeous fall. I can't believe I just did that. I got to get back up. Hold on. I can't use the back button until unless I'm in the media box. Are you guys loving the new Facebook, huh? Man. I tell you what, when I get to be a big mogul like, like, uh, like uh, what's his name? I'm going to hire a nine-year-old to do my website too. <laughs> Where is it? There we go. There we go. And there's the window shot. Uh, the the presentation, just like we've seen before, the presentation. When you get that big window reflecting over the top of these potatoes, it's just really, really nice. Now you're using a pretty wide angle lens for this one. Am I right? I am for both of them, really. It's just my little, my little point and shoot. And I went back and looked and it said it was 11 millimeters, but 
it doesn't look that wide. So well, no, it's 11 millimeters for the tiny sensor. Yeah. So is it? Uh, it's not an APC then, right? It's just a point and shoot. Um. Yeah, I think so. It, the lens does not come off. So okay. It's, it's yep. probably equivalent to like a 24. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. That's just really, really beautiful. I love how you have the light coming through. It's just a really fun shot. I could see this in a magazine in a heartbeat. Yeah? Thank oh, you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. It was amazing because the our, we live in the woods, as you saw, and we didn't have much light coming through the windows until all the leaves fell down. And all <laughs> of a sudden, all this gorgeous light appeared in our house. <laughs> well, there you go. The... Uh, the, the leaf peepers are sad, but you're happy. So mm -hmm. every, it's a give and take for everything in this world. Uh, looks really nice. I love your light. I love the fact you're using this big. And you're not diffusing this light. You're just letting it I come tried, in. and it didn't. It got too dark. Yeah, so. I was going to say, you know, this is not direct light. This is um, ambient light coming through. So right. uh, you can certainly get away without diffusion. Nicely done. Thank you. Nicely done. Lee, you got in really tight on a mushroom. This is always fun to see, Lee, because you're showing us something we don't normally see. Very few times are we going to get down that tight to look at a mushroom. And so we're seeing all these little edges that we don't normally see. Your lighting is beautiful. Got a light from the right and a right light from the left. Is one of these lights a fill card and a main light, or are they both <laughs> mains? I'm sorry. Are there two lights or one light and a bounce? There's two lights. There's a camera right, camera left is a the strobe, and camera right is a speed light, and a 128 power. Okay. So one of one. And it's just a direct speed light. Nice little hard speed it's light. Just a direct speed light with a little white dome. Yep. And yeah, a yeah, diffuser. Yeah. Yeah, it's really, it's a great shot. Good for you. Thank you. Is there a mirror or is the, is, are there two mushrooms? No, there's two mushrooms. Two mushrooms. Okay. It looked there's like it could be a mirror there. Mushroom. It can't, can it? You're right. No, it's, uh, there's two mushrooms and I photograph uh, with my macro two. Uh, use my 50 millimeter lens with a macro two. 10 millimeter macro. Okay. Yeah. And what, what camera are you shooting? Fujifilm X-T2. Okay. That's really, really pretty. It's the kind Thank of you. shot that, that when you see it, it, you have to stop for a second to figure out what you're seeing. That's really, that's really great. Good job. Pretty Thank good you, job. Don. Mm -hmm. Humberto. Hello, Don. How are you? I'm doing fine. Good. Look at the gummy bears. Gummy bears, yes. Just one I, shot? I, sorry? Is there just one shot? Just one shot. I tried several angles, but this is the only one that I, that I like it. Okay. And I, I dipped the, the gummy bears into oil to make them shinier. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great... It's a it's a great gummy bear shot. There's no doubt about it. Your your design looks good. It's very modern. It's in focus from top to bottom. Is that focus stacking? Yes, eight photos in total. Yep. So this whole I mean this photo stacking is not just. I want to make this really clear to folks. It's not just a cool technique that some people use. It is changing photography. And if you're gonna be a tabletop shooter you must master focus stacking because for 80 plus years, we had dropped out focus. We've seen dropped out focus. I love dropped out focus and I use it all the time. We've seen that. This has been hard to do for most photographers. The only way you could do this in the past was a view camera, which were expensive, difficult to learn to use, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and not available on 35 and etc and totally unavailable on 35 now there was a calumet made one but they're out of business now 
And so this is a look that you've got to get into your, into your belt. It doesn't mean you have to shoot everything this way. It just means you've got to know when to do it and how to do it. Um, Photoshop has a good method. Um, what's it called? Hello, Helio. Helicon. Helicon has an excellent method. Helicon's entire thing is focus stacking. So um, you, you, if it's tabletop that you're after, spend some time learning this technique. Uh, Humberto, that's a great shot, man. It's fun. Thank you. It's colorful as hell. I love it. Thank you. Plus, I, I really do like gummy bears. <laughs> I, I try to use, uh, I use soft light for this photo, but I try to use hard light to project some shadows. Mm -hmm. But as the gummy bears are transparent, the shadow didn't look very nice. So I, I really kept the soft light. Okay. Well, your choice was good. It was very clean. Thank you. Very clean. Yep. Bob. Yes. Hey, Bob, how are you? I'm good. This is exactly what the assignment called for. Did, did it absolutely perfectly. An oblique shot and a straight down shot. Clean, clean, clean. One thing you can do, you see the highlights on your, on your, this guy right here? Yes. See, bring those up a little bit in Lightroom. Paint it and add some contrast. Bring those brights up just a little bit. See how pretty they are here on that one? I did that, that on has, that one. What's that? I did that on that one and yep. forgot on the bottom one. Yep, that, that says freshness. Because as we all know, that only lasts for about a minute after you cut an orange or a lemon. It only lasts for about a minute, then it dries. And then it's right. kind of uh, icky looking and we have to, you, then you have to put water or oil on it or something. Uh, really do like your, your, your light coming from the back like this, giving it that nice, strong feeling. But I really want to know how you lit it before I go over and look at you behind the scenes. I think you got a big softbox over the top and you've got something up front, right? Yes, uh, the, the main light is a uh, scrim window light. Uh-huh. Big, big uh, window. And then uh, just a white card sort of over top and forward a bit. And, and white cards on the side. Nice. Well, here in, here's how, how interesting this is. When we come from the side, that guy is our hero. No doubt, right? right? If they're only red thing, we don't see a whole lot of these guys up here. We know that, that they're related. Uh, we've got the dish. But this guy is our hero. When we're coming down, those guys are the hero. Because now we see the roundness. We see them there. And the reds become just accents to pull our eye to the middle here. Yeah. That's a, that's a, good, that's a good set of images. You should be happy with these. Thank you. And after taking the strobe class yesterday, you're going to be shooting some strobe soon, huh? I'm going to try. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah, cool. Works perfectly. Well, when you got nice window light, it's hard to pull yourself away from it anyway. These little V cards, great idea. Great idea. Yep. Um, if you want to add more light to anything that's down in, in there, think about this. You can take a white card and balance it like this over the top of this, right? And that lot card lighting up is gonna give you highlights in here and here and down in here and probably shine the hell up out of those grapefruits. And that you'd probably put it on, a, the way I would do it is put it on a boom, you know, attach it to a boom here and just move it until you get the best thing. You didn't need that in this shot. I'm just saying that's another way to go. Another way to add to your arsenal. Nicely done. Thank you. Laura. Hi, Don. Hi, Laura. How are you? Very good. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So we're coming down at the natural look here and we're coming across. Yeah. Mm. Let me ask you, which one do you like better? The bottom photo. I'm kind of leaning that way too. Yeah, I was not sure about the the, the top, and yeah. the colors uh, are completely different. What I'm seeing with the top, and it's a little thing for me, 
but all mm -hmm. of the, the oranges are constrained in the white. Uh -huh. Except that guy. They're all constrained in the white. So it's like it's the white thing with the oranges on them. Down here, we've got the plate coming way up here. We've got these little oranges leading our eyes back. And then the oranges break through yeah. the constraint of it. And I, I just like that better. What did you do in post? Uh, the next one. In, the, in, in what? In post. In post? Processing. Uh, oh, okay. I, I use a little, I use uh, Lightroom for uh -huh. the top. For the top, I, list, uh, I use, uh, I change a little of the light. I use more light. But with the bottom, I didn't change anything. Okay. Okay. Um, are, you, are you good with Lightroom? Or I'm just, just beginning with Lightroom, actually. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's my, my, my first time using that. Okay, I'm going to, um, uh, I think in the, uh, in the assi next week's assignment, I think there's some Lightroom things. I want you to do the Lightroom, photo, the Lightroom stuff that, that is in the video, okay? Okay, okay. So watch the video and, and, and do that because what I'm thinking you could do is pull the orange up in the oranges just a little bit uh -huh. and dark in the back just a little bit and they'll just pop off the page. But I I have a problem with that one because I change, but the green of the middle of the mandarin, uh -huh. the, that, that, yeah, that color change and looks like a damaged fruit. Ah, so what you have to do is you have to use your brush. Okay. To brush okay. that and then isolate that and bring that back to the orange. Yeah, because it's green, but when I changed the, yep. the light and color was like brown. I don't know. Yep. It was dark, yeah. you know? So. Yeah, because you were doing global. You're changing okay, everything global. Okay. And um, okay. I like to be very careful and just do, uh, I use the brush a lot for that. Okay, okay, perfect. All right, very good. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so this, is there a strobe behind this or? No, just the natural light. I have okay. the sun in that side. So okay. yeah. without the, the screen, the colors were brighter, but I, I thought it was too much light. So it's soft, the light coming from yeah. that. That's a great way to do it. Beautiful. Um, I, would, I would honestly say you could probably bring that a little closer. As long okay. as it's not in the picture, get it as close as you can. Okay. Uh, and then if you want to lean it over, lean it over to about there, you know? So uh -huh. it's leaning over the top a little bit and you'll get a little more highlight in your Okay. Top. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Okay, thank you. Thank you for coming along. Look at this. Gerard, is it Gerardo or Gerardo? Gerardo? Not here. Hot, hot chilies. Actually, it, it is Gerardo. Well, it's Gerardo when he's here. Gerardo. When he's not here, it's Gerald. Gerardo we'll just go with that. Like, yeah. All right. Uh, all right, Gerardo, um, uh, very cl clever shot. The smoke, a little bit of discerning here that it starts to wipe out the color and stuff below it because you're coming straight down on it. Um, but your light is good. Light is good over here, uh, all through here. And okay. Uh, that's the oh, that's a setup. Well, I thought it was on mute. Where did he go? Here. That's the setup. So I think that's got to be all right. That's got to be a softbox or a scrim. That's what it is. Scrim has got a light behind it. All right. Very good. Nicely done, Gerardo. Thank you. Yep. He's working on his P52 assignments already. <laughs> Absolutely. Hot, hot, hot. Yep. Greg Reeves. Hey, Greg. Hey, Don. So you got them. You're going outside with it, nature, but you're also bringing is Is this a just for sun or you got a strobe behind there? Nope. That's just for sun. That's in the afternoon. So. 
that's uh, really pretty. Thank you. For editorial, everything's fine. For advertising, all of these little guys fix. Mm -hmm. I would say for your portfolio, Greg, to go through and make these, uh, that one's already pretty nice, but just make them the best peppers that ever existed for your book. Okay. Okay. Because it's easy to go, it's easier to go the other way. If they said, well, don't fix them. We want them, you know, farm to table kind of look. Great. You've already right. got that. But if you're going to make them perfect, absolutely go with them perfect. Like the backgrounds, nice and natural. Got a little bit out of focus here that just drives this focus uh, a little better. And you didn't lose focus up front, which is real important. Um, cool. What'd you do? And in, in, did you take any uh, color out? Did you desaturate this? I did desaturate just a touch. And then I brought up the. Uh, um, drawing a blank now. Down saturation, and it brought the colors out by themselves a little bit. Okay. Uh, All right. So we desaturated overall, and then went back in for the orange, yellow, and green. Yes. Yes. Okay. Got it. Okay. Yeah, it has a nice, funky little feel to it. Cool. Good job. All right. Thank you. And here we are outside. You know, one of the things that gets me sometimes is when someone will say, oh, I'm a natural light shooter. And when you watch them shoot, all they're doing is going out with their camera. Mm -hmm. I've been a natural light shooter for 30 years. I had a van full of crap to shoot natural light. <laughs> yeah. White cards, scrims, stands, C stands to hold scrims and cards. Natural light doesn't mean nothing. It means you're just using the sun and ambient mm -hmm. yeah. uh, uh, to do it. So this is great. I mean, you're saying, yeah, we're outside. We're going to go with this natural stuff, but we're going to we're going to bring all of our photographic knowledge of what we can do with light. We can bring it with us. And it's, uh, this is a bush held bounce card. It's a bush bounce card. <laughs> That's right. Assisted by Bush. <laughs> That's right. All right. Very good, Patrick Matthews. Patrick, you here? Going once. All right. Um, one of the, the first things that you notice about the top down uh, shot here of Patrick's is he's got his light above, so therefore the knife reflects. The knife reflects. You can see where his light is because it's coming right down on those tomatoes. When you move the camera down, the knife starts reflecting negative and the knife becomes dark. Whenever you're shooting things with knives, the, the reflection on the knife is super important. It's got to reflect some light. This is not bad in here, but I would have brought something down here. You can have a little gradation in it. You can even have a little black in it. Uh, and I really think that the tomatoes reflecting in it, that's pretty cool. But letting it go all black down here uh, not good. And um, Patrick, we've got we to gotta clean up the, the anomalies on the knife. I don't think there's very many up there. It's got to look really good. I do like both shots. Um, both shots work really well. And you can see what the reflection on the knife does. In the top shot, the knife's the hero. The tomatoes are there to accompany the knife. In the bottom shot, it's a shot of tomatoes with a knife as a, as a prop. Props, prop. And it's all because of the angle of view and a little bit of light on the, on the, uh, the knife. See how he did his light? Yep, light above. Very cool. Good job, Pat. Patrick, all right. Jean, what is it? sugar and pears? It's goat cheese with um, honey on the pears. Okay. So it's the same angle. You just came in closer and went uh, horizontal. Am I right? Oh, so it's probably pretty close to the same angle, but okay. um, 
one the hero is in the front and the other the hero is in the back so a different mm -hmm. point of view just not a different angle mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i kind of like i i got i got i really really got to go for this one i gotta go for i love this right here I love so the vertical this. you mean yeah i love this very subtle horizon line and all the light this is beautifully sharp against everything here and this one I don't dislike it. I just think that this big bunch of out of focus in the front is just too, it's too um, unnerving for me. Because the only thing that I, I see initially in focus is this pair. Mm -hmm. I have to look for this because of the similarity in color here, but the pair comes in focus. This shot is just right on. I could see that with, you know, type up here and you know, recipe and the whole bit here. It's really, really pretty. Sure. And let's look at your light. Let's see what you did with the light. It's a different shot, but the same setup. So don't be too alarmed. That one just didn't work. For so many reasons, it didn't work. Okay. I'll make it work eventually. Okay, so the setup is? The same. I have white cards in the back and the, the light. I It just turned it 90 degrees. Okay. Got it. Okay. Yeah, very good. Very good. Thank you. Yeah, good shot. Good shot. Uh, Steph is not here. Her um, stake, so she shot uh, top light, side light. Uh, and she shot the stakes. I got to tell, okay, let me ask you though. Steph is not here. I I like the straight down one from the top. It's it's all right for me, but it looks like a. Um, this is the kind of thing you do for a grocery store. And this is the kind of thing you do right here. This is the kind of thing you do for a magazine ad. And that I'm not making. I'm not saying that's always, always, always. But this looks. I really like this one from the side. Here, seeing this. This one. Either way, I, I think it's fine. I think this one's fine. I really like coming at it this way. But if you were shooting for Safeway or Fry's or some market, they're gonna love this because they get to see all the, the you see the size of the steaks. With this one, you see the magic of steak, you know, the, the thickness of it, uh, the, the way the meat looks, uh, that type of thing. So all three of them work nicely. Light, yep, strip light, 8200 adding just a little bit of shadow, as you can see that shadow falling here. A little bit of pop from the side, really nice. Ooh, corn. Daniel. Hey, Don, happy Saturday. Yeah, same to you, sir. It's not really my style, but I thought I'd do something different today. Yeah, it's really, really fun. That's really fun. Blue paper? Yeah, blue paper shot from below. And the left shot and the right shot was uh, straight on from the side. Let's get your light. So your light's coming through a scrim. Fill card. Uh, single light? Uh, yes, from the left, okay. yeah. That really, uh, it's very cool, Daniel. Oh, thank you. Very cool. I probably would tell you only because it only appears once. Let's get rid of that guy right there. It's the only ones in it. You see what I'm saying? Yes. If yeah. there were other ones, leave them. But since they're the only two, get rid of them. So it's okay. absolutely perfect. Over here, you're fine. Okay. Here you're fine. Uh, big white fill card down the side here coming back with beautiful reflection on the corn. Did you shine the corn at all? No, that's just the way it appeared. Okay. That's uh, very nice, man. Cool. Thank you. And look good to they look good together. Um, and Daniel always makes absolutely amazing behind the scenes shots, so you can learn a lot from his behind the scenes. Trisha. Hello. Hi, Teresa. How are you? Good. How are you? 
Very good. So we've got celery. Hmm. This, I love what you did with the graphics. You know, the angles here. Very cool. All these lines coming down and then line in here. And then you stood the celery straight up. That's really, really cool. What did you do in post with this? That's out of camera. Right. Oh, so, really? Yeah. Okay. Both of them are out of camera. Okay. I'm, I'm liking this one. However, let me show you one, one thing. All of this out of focus running up here, I'm not crazy about. What I'm crazy about are the leaves here. Mm -hmm. So I think your shot actually is there. Okay. I'd, I'd just crop it out. What camera are you using? Um, oh, 5D Mark II? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got like more than enough pixels to crop that out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because we don't need to see this. All of this is nothing, and this is all out of focus. That's your shot right in there. Let the, a little bit of out of focus here just lead us right up into these things here. But that's really pretty. Now, you've got to get in and do some post. What do you normally do post-wise? So post is not my strong suit. Um, so I'm still, I'm learning everything, but that's. Okay. I want to, I want you, I want to totally encourage you for next week's assignment to do one or both of the um, Lightroom things that I'm going to plug in there for you. Okay. Okay. I want you to take the time and do it because there's some very, very cool things that you can do in Lightroom to enhance this shot. This is the celery shot on top is a good shot, but it's kind of flat because yeah. digital is flat by itself, just digital is flat. You, you go in there and you just add a little bit of a curve or a little bit of a pop, instantly it's gonna look better. And the, with the tools in, in uh, Lightroom, you can do a lot by only doing a little. Okay. Okay? Okay. Right, very good, very good. Thank you. You bet. Big soft box to the left, fill card to the right. Nice. Very nice. Joe. Hi, Don. Joey C. That's that's Joe. That's Joe's gang name. It's Joey C. That's it. <laughs> when when Joey C calls and says, "Hey, you want me to come over and make you pancakes?" You are in fear now, my friend. You <laughs> fear that. Uh, Joe, this is really cool, man. Thanks. I wasn't sure about the berries on top of the pancakes. Well, one of the things that you're doing here is you're absolutely showing us the assignment so perfectly done because you didn't change your light, correct? Yeah, same light. Same light. So we don't even see the syrup on this one, and we see it plenty on this one. Right. The difference between the angle of incidence, angle of, of reflection. Mm -hmm. uh, really, really pretty. Uh, both shots work for me. Really okay. work, but I really kind of like this one, man. I really kind of like that. I think that's kind of cool. Uh, this just, one's really fun as well, but I love seeing the coffee with the bubbles, and right. the syrup and the cream and the whole bit. I really like seeing that. Um, okay. But either one of them, you could use either one of these in your portfolio. There's no doubt about it. Okay, they're, thanks. They're, they're clean and nice. Let's go look at your light. There, there we go. One. Softbox through scrim. The scrim was angled over a little, and then in the back of the black car, just to kind of <laughs> knock down some light coming onto the onto the the vinyl back. How long? How long did it take us to get you away from uh, two softboxes on each side? Two soft. I don't know. Year. <laughs> two softboxes. Couple speed lights. <laughs> yep. And uh, and uh, yeah, you're really, really, really looking good, man. That that's those are nice shots, Joe. Thanks. Really Beautiful. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Mark Shaw. Ooh. Hi, Don. Hey, Mark. Biscuits. All right. Yep. Uh, 
straight down and a little bit to the angle. Now, did you change your light at all? Yes. Okay. What did you What did you change on the light? Because the top biscuits don't have the same color as the bottom biscuits. That's why. No, they happy. don't. Uh, the top biscuits, it was more to the side. Uh huh. Camera left, and the bottom biscuits was from directly behind. I see. Okay. And I had a big scrim. I see. Why are they different color? I don't think that's an, I don't think that's because of lighting, because this looks the same. I think it's post processing. What did you do in, in post? I just used a couple of curves adjustment layers. That's about it. Okay. Um, we're getting a uh, part of the reason we're getting a lighter background down here is because your light is reflecting off this background a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. And so up here, it's not reflecting off this back, off the background. I think, honestly, I think this one is just about a two thirds to a stop underexposed. Okay. I'd put it back in Lightroom and bump it up with the slider, take a slider up three sure. or so, and see what it looks like. Um, okay. But yeah, I would make a match. Now, as far as, as the assignment, look how great this is an example of point of view. We don't, see, we don't have an idea at all how thick these are here. We don't see the sides of them, and up here we do. Now, which one do I like better? Man, I don't know, it's a toss up. If I was a food editor, it'd just be which one I would, I would use. This is a really clean, nice shot. I would, I would use this photograph, Mark. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. This one, I, I want to see the color back. So if you can tag me in uh, Facebook, that would be fine. If you can get the color back, this is a solid shot as well. But this is just really a nice design, a nice serpentine, no matter which way you go with it. You've got some nice lines going through it. It really looks good. Great. Now let's see your light. All right. Yeah, that's for the top shot. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So angle of incidence. Angle of incidence, angle of reflections coming right back up in your camera. When you were over here shooting down angle of incidence, angle of reflection, it was missing your camera. That's why you don't get the highlights. That's why I think you might want to go in and just pop the exposure just a little bit. I can do that. Yeah, very cool. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Don. Mm -hmm. Denise, Denise Coleman, Hi it's, there. Like, it's like almost lunchtime, and you do this to us. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. That is amazing. Really, I already, really. I already nice. ate it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's one way to go with it. Yep. Um, Denise, this is really pretty. Thanks. Are you a food shooter? No. Oh. Landscapes, scenics, until COVID. I'm yeah. really enjoying this, though. Well, you're 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 quite. I'm good having at fun. It. You're Thanks. you're good at it. These are really good shots. These are. Hey. They're as good a food. I mean, this 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 shot here is as good as I've seen. So I mean, everything's a little bit different, but uh, you've you've. Uh, this is your top down, and this is from the side. You didn't change your light, did you? No. Yeah, same light. Uh, we don't know what that is. We're going to go over. Is this window light? Oh, window. it is. Through a scrim. Beautiful. So when you Thanks. change your angle, you can see one of the things that you got from it by having the backlight is this highlight. It came right along through here. See all the highlights on all the little bit of meat there that were missing yeah. here? That doesn't mean this is wrong. This is a nice shot because now we get to see all the, the, the food, the salt on top, all the colors. This is a lay flat. And there's no, there's no doubt in anyone's mind that that is not your, that's your subject right there. That guy right there. He's the hero. Because everything else is, is mitigated by cropping and et cetera. Uh, right in the middle. Love it. It's really, really clean. Uh, what do you do in post? Um, I, I've got a lot of experience in post. I use a, 
um, Lightroom for some of it, and then I go over to Photoshop. Um, I lightened the uh, knife, for example. Mm -hmm. I've thrown a curve on. Um, on the right, I painted the sides of the stakes to make them a little darker so they look like they had gotten more sear to them. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. I would go back into, I mean, I'm going to be real picky because your, your work yeah. is already really good. Thank you. I'm going to go in there and say, you see the, the little bit darker part of the steak and the little bit lighter part of the steak, right? You see this kind yes. of where, where it looks rare? Yes. Accentuate that so slightly that we don't see it, we feel it. We don't, hmm. I mean, we're talking three points move. Five would be too many. So are you saying an uh, increase the contrast up. between the, the, um, the dark and the light? Yes. We're going to open okay. it up a little bit, we're going to pink in it, and then we're going to make the sides just ever so slightly darker. Now, okay. if, if, if you showed it to your neighbor, she wouldn't be able to tell the difference. But yeah. you would tell the difference. That's how slight we're talking about, okay? Okay. Yeah, really nice. Very nice. Thanks. Well, it, I'm glad you, I'm glad you, uh, you got shoved inside because uh, this is good work. Well, thank you. Doing? Thank you. I'm really enjoying it. And where are you located? Albuquerque. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. yeah Albuquerque. Sunshine like you guys. Yeah, well, you, well, you have something we don't have, and that's that beautiful mountain south of you. It just, yeah, they're oh gorgeous. My. They're we, pretty. My wife and I spent some time up there. We fell in love with the other side of the mountain, so the Sandia. There's areas over there that we just, oh, I want to live there so bad. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Very nice. How many? I live on the food, west side of town. What's that? How many food shots have you done, <clears throat> Denise? How, how many food shots have you been doing? Well, let's say I've been doing this for a month. But um, I probably spent, I mean, kind of revved up to it. I have highs and lows with my photography and it really hit me hard that I couldn't be going going places. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've been watching a lot of YouTubes. Joni Simon, yeah. um, a lot Joni's of hers, uh, We Eat Together, um, just a whole lot of different ones. And so um, I just decided that why not? You know, I'm here, I'm cooking instead of eating out. So mm -hmm. let's take pictures of it. <laughs> well, uh, I don't think of Joni's uh, YouTube as a YouTube. I think of it as a master class in food photography. Um, you know, if if there's something to learn about food photography and it's not in Joni's YouTube, you don't need to know it. She's just, she's, <laughs> she's good. really, really good. And she's a really, really good teacher. Some great yeah. photographers suck at teaching. Yeah. She doesn't. She's a really good photographer and she really knows how to break it down. Yeah. Joni's great. Absolutely great. Lovely I light. So. Beautiful light. Thank you. Ilona. Hi, Don. Sorry. Hi, how are you? I love good, your, good. I, I love your background here. I love the light coming. It's very soft. Is this window light? Yes, it is. Uh, my right. angel set up. Yeah. Uh, it's just so pretty. It's just so soft. What do you do in post? Um, I In Lightroom, I kind of get it to the way how I see it, kind of as the colors a little bit, the texture, uh, make sure that my hero or the subject is a little lighter than the background. Uh, mm -hmm. And then I take it in Photoshop and I play with levels. And again, make sure I adjust the colors the way I right. see it. Um, and yeah, it's just a, a little tiny adjustments here and there. Yeah, that's, you know, and sometimes that's all food needs, just tiny little tweaks. I really like your post-processing. Uh, this is a great shot. I love the shot on the bottom. bottom the top one's a good <laughs> shot. This I really, really like. I like, I'm a, I like minimalism. Oh, and this right. is, you know, gray, black, and asparagus. <laughs> yes, I just I wanted to keep it kind of simple. I was thinking I want to emphasize the texture in the um, asparagus. So I kind of figured I'm not going to do any styling other than just presenting the asparagus. Which is a style of choice in its own. Right. Yeah. 
you um, chose to style it minimally. I love it. I, 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 it's a really great shot. Let's thank see the you. light here. I also did another one that was um, from the top two. Um, at, at first, I didn't really like it, but now kind of looking at it, I'm thinking mm, it's not bad either. Um, I can actually quickly edit there too, but um, let's see if I can find it. I... No, just, just put it in Facebook and tag me. Oh. Yeah, put okay. it on the Facebook you know what, I, and tag me. Okay, because I can add it. Uh, it's going to be adding to the other photo now. Uh, it should be there shortly. Oh, it's going to be way down at the bottom. Oh, you think so? Uh, no, I put it in... Um, it's in the comments, if I put in a comment in the board. Let's see. It's there. If you go back to the other picture, you might need to reload this actually. Sorry. It should be there. Yeah, it's coming up. So I did from. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry. That's the wrong one. I. It loaded the wrong one. Sorry, it's loading the wrong one. Um, he had it from top, but it, did, it looked kind of uh, flat, so it didn't look the same. So I figured these two might be the best uh, options. Yeah, the black against this, the, the asparagus here is just really strong. Love it. Solid. And your Thank light you. is great. Nice and nice, nice scrim. Did you make this? It's like a home Yes. Egg? Yes, Great. loving. Yeah. I'm happy to be back in the U.S. and going back to Home Depot. I'm having to make too much fun. Yeah, well, I, 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 uh, I freak out at Home Depot because I can just feel my Mastercard bouncing around and right. So many things. <laughs> yeah, beautifully done. Thank R. you. R.E. R.E. Are you out there, R.E.? Uh, well, we got. Um, we got a, a deep reflection, a bright reflection of the light source on this side. So we're seeing the light source come back in the, in the chocolate. And you can see it changes the color of the chocolate a little bit because we're adding that white strobish, bluish strobe to the chocolate. Over here, we don't have that. Uh, I'm not sure what we're lighting it up with. Maybe, maybe a bounce card for this one. Let's see. Yeah, probably a bounce card for that one. And so we're getting secondary light bounce card reflecting in here. And now while the entire Hershey's bar is reflecting the bounce card, over here I have a feeling it's reflecting the main light itself. And you can see how, to, how they work differently. The bounce card will always be different than the strobe. Um, Pretty nice. Um, first attempt at fo focus stacking, not bad. Not bad at all. All right, good. Eleanor, are you here? Hey, Don. Yeah. Hey, there you are. Yeah. That nice modern shot. Just that's that's my Eleanor, <laughs> right there. That's really cool. I was inspired by Brandon over at Fig and Light. Do you ever see his channel? No, I don't know. I, yeah. don't, know, I don't know that name. Uh, when you get it, when you think about it, pop it into a. a it's, name, uh, it's in the chat. It's in the comments on the photograph there, Don. Oh, okay, great. And, and the thing I linked it to. I mean, the yeah. video I watched that I imitated. Well, I've got to figure out how to use more lights in my my photography because I have so many lights. It's like. I don't want to, I'm, I got 14 speed lights, folks. So I'm going to start designing shots where I need 14 speed lights. That's what I'm going to do. Maybe I'll go shoot an airplane or something like, like what's his name did. This is really cool. Um, I want to see your lighting set up here, but I want to see the, okay. So you're using a hard light with a, with a flag very close to the subject. Mm -hmm. And that's why, folks, that's why we have an edge to it. If Eleanor had moved this flag up here, you may not even see the effect, except it would be brighter on this side. You wouldn't see it. The closer you get the flag, 
the closer you get this flag right here to your subject, what you're already shooting, the sharper the edge is going to be. So you you chose to get just a nice clean edge here. That's really very nice, Eleanor. That's really fun. Thank you. And the really other thing, the other thing I learned from him is, do you see the way there's a gradient on the backboard? Uh mm huh. -hmm. So how he did that was he had a gap between the horizontal and vertical boards. And that just made the backboard more interesting because of the light fall off. Yes, you can do things like, here's your surface. And let's say you're using a side light. Camera coming from down here. I'll, almost all of us, almost every one of us is going to put our back like that. Because we learned in kindergarten that we all line up, right? Mm -hmm. But you know what you can do? Can, you can turn it like that, which is going to get more light here and less light back there. You can create a gradient. You can turn it like this. You can put it right up next to, to the light and get a big fast fall off. You do a whole lot of things with that background. I, I love it. I love it. This is really fun. This Is this going to be a mailer or something? Uh. I don't know what to do with it, Don. I oh, yeah, I would I would make a mailer out of it. Okay. Cool. Right, right away. All right. Um, I put right up right up here. In the it looks like it's square, so go to Moo and get a square card, right? Yeah. Square little postcard, and just put Eleanor Delaney, photography, right here. In that color right there, that gold. Okay. Actually, just very quickly, speaking of mailers, you know, in our marketing class, we developed quite a few assets. Uh -huh. And recently I thought, oh, I better not send them anywhere because no one's working. They're all... Oh, no, they're, no, no. Absolutely wrong thing to do. You need to send more because they're not working and they want to see stuff. But I don't have their home address, right? I have the office address. Oh, no. It'll get to them. Oh, really? Okay. It'll get to them. Yep. Yep. All that mail's being picked up and forwarded out. Absolutely. Oh, I'm glad. Yep. I... Right now, you got to market, 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 market. Um, before we sign off, will someone remind me? Say, Don, tell us your new marketing thing, okay? Please. Mm -hmm. I want to get all the images done, and then I'm going to tell you something that's going to blow your minds, and you're going to think about things differently from this Saturday forward. Thank and you, Don, owner. Beautiful. And remember yesterday's Friday call, we talked about large B flats, and sure enough, I contacted two sign companies. Both can get me them. One is only six, one, three sixteenths, which is too thin. The largest thickness I can get is half inch and $50 each. So much, much quicker than buying insulation. I use the three sixteenths, dear. I don't use the half inch. It's real heavy. Okay. And that it's was really, really heavy. A three sixteenths is fine. If you put a, put a frame around it, okay. you'll be fine. And that was $25 each. And yep. Both... You'll be fine. Perfect. Yeah. So thank you for that. You're welcome. All right, Melvin. Is Melvin yeah. here? Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, Melvin never misses. All right, yeah. Melvin. I got to tell you, I like the bottom one better than the top one. I don't dislike the top one. I just like this one better. I think part of it is you not only did you move your camera down, you came in on it. Right. And you just brought it in for a tighter presentation. This is not bad. I like your light, Melvin. You got a good light going on there for these chops. That looks good. That contrast in the shadows, that feels right. Looks like your light is coming from top right with a with a kicker over here. Is that a kicker or a fill, fill card? Pretty close. You're pretty close, Dan. I got, uh, if you want to go to the, the BTS, um, the next one, uh, it's actually uh, two strobes, one on each side with some grids. Okay. And, and uh, in post, you were able to turn the Corona bottle into chops? Exactly, actually. That's, that's so it. cool. That's, now, see, now that's, that's impressive. So <laughs> I'm liking both of them now. That's just damn impressive. Daniel Franks is over there frantically right now looking through the Photoshop catalog to find the damn beer into chops filter. So. <laughs> All right. Yeah, two grids. Okay. 
they get yeah. some is one grid farther away than the other uh, about the same i think this, same. yeah this highlight is presenting much differently than that highlight even over here the camera maybe also maybe. Angle reflection and all that maybe yeah, this is, the, I like this shot a lot. It's well styled, good job with that. This is not bad at all, but this one uh, really, and again, because you're coming in and you're, you're making a, let's just look at it this way, okay? This is a safe photograph. Okay. That's safe. You can do that photograph, you're safe. You're moving in a little bit here. You're cropping off, you're pulling out, uh, you're taking that off. This chop is obviously the hero because it's not cropped. It's the only thing it's not cropped. Uh, it's a little, um, little more edgy, just a little bit more edgy, but I do like it. I, I like it a lot. Okay. All right, good. Solid. Jay, where's Jay? There's Jay. Hi, All right, Jay. How you doing? Good, good, good class. All right, so tell me no, why. Sweetie, it's bedtime. Why? Because it's bedtime. This it's one's bedtime. bigger, what's well, wider than this one's brighter than that one, which doesn't make sense. Yeah, I think it's just, I think it's just post. I think I lightened up. Okay. Um, the one on the bottom more so than the top. It was kind of a judge. It's a little edgy to figure out what would be too light and where I'd lose the background. Yeah. If I lighten it up too much, the background would well, this start is, to. Yeah, I think this is your, your better. This is your better shot. I like this because I like the color. I like it coming out of the bowl, etc. Up here, um, this one I would be. I would say is number two, and this one's number three. Again, they're all within the bowl here. Um, but they do present differently. I, I like what you did. You, sh you shot down, you shot to the side, and you shot kind of oblique to it. Uh, but for this subject, I like this. It looks full. Looks like a bounty, right? Um, it is. It uh, is of stuff. Yeah. yeah I added the uh, I added the uh, lemons uh, just to give it like some diversity and a little more punch. Mm -hmm. Although the color on the, the color on the oranges is really lovely. She come in close. Yeah, I would I would get these back into post and get them. They've got to be brighter. Really pick up the brightness in here. Um, okay. This one looks really dull. This one looks nice and poppy. Okay. Right. Good. Good. And what lens and camera? You you still shooting a Fuji? Yeah, this is a Fuji XT3 uh, with a 18 one thirty-five lens. Um, yeah, one th thirtieth of a second at f three. Nice. But I tried. To, I was experimenting with you know just the black background side pieces just to uh, get uh, just just get a so you know mm -hmm. get a blackish uh, frame for it. Works works really re really well. Um, yeah, I just I think a little post work is what's needed. So okay, yeah. I'll do that. That's uh -huh. easy enough. Ah, Thank you. Yep. Terry, did you make it? Yes, I did. All right. <laughs> Berry pie. Berry pie. Berry torts. Look at the, uh, the, the bringing that background. That's your, I'm, I'm going to guess that's your scrim. Yep. That's your lighting it with. Yep. Bring that background into it and getting all that beautiful, bright, letting it flare a little bit right in here, a little bit of flare coming off that. That strawberry there and there, a little bit of flair makes it very fresh looking. Um, this has, when, once you came up and you got rid of the flair, you were getting more color. Do you see that? How shooting into the flare, we're just, we're, we're kind of souping our color a little bit. And then up here, we pick the color back up because the light's not coming into our lens. What, what camera are you shooting with? The D700 with the 28105. It hasn't died yet, the lens, so I'm still using it. Okay, I was just going to ask if you're using a very old lens. Yeah, it is. It's an old film lens. Yeah, that's probably what's happening here. Um, it's not 
usual, um, but I have an old I have an old Nikon lens that I was so excited to use on my new Nikon digital cameras. Not no. going to do it. It's just too old. Oh. Yeah, but but that's only uh, shooting the into the flare. Oh, okay. But once you come up here, it's fine. Mm -hmm. It just those uh, so the old lens can't handle the flare. It's probably oh. uncoated, for one thing, and that's why it's mucking up everything in the picture, not just the air's area or the flare. Now, that's not to say this isn't a a good shot. It's a pretty nice tight shot. I would just simply go in and saturate it a little bit, see if you can pull the color back to this. This is really pretty. Okay. Really pretty. Cool, thank you. Plus we get to see all the, the roundness of it, which we don't really see up here. We really get to see the roundness. And we see more graphics in the berries, all the round berries as we look down on them. We see the strawberries, and I mean the, the raspberries and the blueberries. We see the, the, the roundness of the tart, the roundness of this, and we lose that up here. We don't see it as much. Yeah. Not what one is not better than the other. Just in this this particular case, it just seems to pull the shot up a little bit. Okay. Yeah, I've never shot much into the flare kind of stuff, and so I thought it was kind of interesting, and it showed how tall it was because mm -hmm. little torts, and they have like one layer of berries. So I kept piling berries on it, and they were falling off. And I said, okay, I'll leave those alone. And I mm -hmm. thought this showed how tall it is versus how yep. pretty and round. Cool. Thank you. That's yeah. You're absolutely right. You're, it does show the the height so much more, so much more um so you used um i took away the black mat and i put the scrim um i took the the uh pie was earlier in the in the morning this is in the afternoon and okay. so i put the scrim where the blackboard was excellent and i have the upper left is a reflector and then you talked about the um coffee bags having the reflective inside stuff mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The hemp hearts, you get them at Costco, the little hemp seeds, inside their bag has that silver reflectiveness. Oh, good. So I put yeah. it, in, it's just right below my tri their tripod. Right here. Yeah. Yep. And so that added just a little bit of light just in the very front. What, what, and what, if you don't know, uh, if you didn't take the other class or haven't worked with me before, one of the great fills you can get is the inside of coffee bags. It's a metallic... It's like a dull silver, yep. but it's an absolutely incredible bounce card. Yeah. Um, you can focus with it. It's smooth like aluminum foil, but it's not so darn bright like aluminum foil. So it just gives you something else for your arsenal. Get it, tape it down on, uh, or glue it down onto a piece of foam core or a piece of cardboard, and it's a really, really nice tool to use. Super nice. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Arnold. Hi, Don. Hi. Hi. Yeah. So with this one, I actually started with a grapefruit in the back. Oh, be before so. you before you continue, uh, I had I couldn't find it because I wanted to go up and uh, uh, do a mea culpa. You are right. You were absolutely right. As you know, the flash sync is two hundred, not two fifty. And I I went up and said two fifty on a post you were on. I want to let you know, I know it's two hundred. I don't know what the hell I was thinking. So, all right. Okay. So tell me about this now. Yeah, so I started out with a grapefruit. And um, when I started shooting, I, it, it, because the idea originally is to, to make it look like stained glass. And when I started shooting, it just doesn't have any contacts on it. So I had to add something on the front. And this is what I came up with. So I want to get this right. Grapefruit? Cucumber, caviar, and shrimp. Yes. Okay. It's an odd. I understand. It's a you, very odd combination. You think? You think it's odd, really? I mean, I would probably. I mean, I felt that the lemon would be too small. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Whatever this concoction is, it probably costs forty bucks at any restaurant, right? At, right at least it looks really good it's a really nice shot either either shot the light is so magical in it coming through the the pink grapefruit uh and then when you have your light you're coming down from the top now did you move your light no it's the okay. same light yeah it's so here we're going through 
here we're going through backlighting, like you said, stained glass, right. this, this, and here we're getting beautiful highlights off the grapefruit, this fresh poppy highlight. Did you have to wet this down again? Uh, no, it was just freshly cut. I mean, okay. all, all I did was really quickly lay them down all and then just shoot it right the moment I put it down. Yeah. Yeah, that's really, really fun, man. That's a good shot. They're, they're, they're really, really good shots. And I added more, be but it didn't work. I mean, I added more lemons in the, on the plate and other yeah, things. You know, it just no. didn't work. No, yeah. keep it as simple as possible. I actually like this one. Okay. Yeah, I, I could like that decide one. if that works better than the close-up one. I'd put them both in your book, Arnold. Okay. Yep. Uh, so you think the vertical one doesn't work as well as the horizontal? No, I think the vertical one works really, really, really nice by itself. But these two would work really good together okay. in your book. Uh, Let the art director that's... see that you do top down and side and, and how, how it's totally different photograph. And all you did was change the angle. Right. That's, okay. that's right. solving problem. That's what you yeah, want. Yeah, and uh, I added the reflectors on it and it just killed the drama of the light. It yeah. just totally made everything flat. So yeah. there was no bounce cards here at all. Just yeah, I love it. And we can, you even got enough light coming through um, around the shrimp here and everything to pick up the caviar. Caviar looks great over here. Absolutely, man. Nicely done. Nicely yeah, done. it's big. It's big. I mean, yep. um, yeah. And I had to elevate the plate because the, the black card in the back, I had to have some light peeking from the bottom mm -hmm. so that I would light the back of the grapefruit. If I had the black card all the way down, there, there's no light at all. Got there's it. no rim light, nothing, no backlight at all. For those of you who haven't taken class with me before, this is called dark field lighting. Dark field lighting. And what usually, what Arnold's talking about, usually the dark card goes all the way down, but he had to keep that space there. That space is actually what we're seeing through the through the uh, grapefruit, that light hitting the back of the grapefruit. If this had come all the way down, all we would see is black because you can't, you know, the, the grapefruit's transparent. So we go right through the grapefruit and see the black. Can I ask a question? Sure. Um, where's the silver reflector? Oh, it's in the back. Um, it's a standard reflector on the light itself because the light is bare bulb. So, well, he's not, Denise, I think I think the, uh, he's talking about your light. He's talking about this reflector. Right, exactly. Not a reflector board. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, Thanks. he's talking about yeah, it's a regular standard silver reflector on the on the strobe. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. You bet. I was really yeah. clever lifting up the board like that. I like. <clears throat> That's one of the things I like is seeing how people solve the problems differently. I would not have thought of lifting the board off the back to get the light underneath of it like that. Oh yeah, yeah. I had to because yeah, I, super clever. Yeah, my first light was the grapefruit and I was like, how can I make the back on black and still have some light coming through? So my only solution is to lift it up. Well, that's, that works. I mean, the, the first thing I would have done is cut a hole in the background. I just, but your right, your right? your um, way of doing it uh, is is elegant, and we didn't destroy a fill card, a black card. <laughs> so, right. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, and, well, also, the other reason is the, the the plate, right? I I needed some kind of rim light on the plate. If I cut a <laughs> hole, I would not have that rim light, that lighting on the plate. This so, rim light here? Yeah. No. Yeah. That, no, that that and also the on no, the board. That one's coming from, that's coming from the top. That's coming from up here. Angle uh, of incidence, angle of reflection. Yeah, it's the light coming through here that you needed to get. Absolutely. And probably through here as well, through the side ones as well. Getting up in here. Okay. Right. Yeah, very cool. Thanks. Good job. Really good job. Carla. Hi, Don. Hi, how are you? We've got some... Uh... Very good on you. There are pupusas. <laughs> okay. Well, they sure look good. Um, 
like the salsa coming out here. I do like this, this shot with the down because of all the shapes you've got here. This straight down, I like that. I like that a lot. Very okay. good. Thanks. Um, the one from the side, this would, see, this one would work for me for if I was going to have copy over here. Okay. Because there's a lot of, ne whenever we shoot something from the side, there's a lot of negative space that takes place. And um, uh, in this, we got the color back. I think that would be, that would be really nice to do. If you were putting this in your, in your portfolio, for instance, okay. I would say do something like this. Here's the shot and take this shot and inlay it right there. Okay. Then you've got both shots, mm -hmm. this one down in here, and it, you tell a story with it. That's really, really, really good. I love this up here. This is you know, all the round. Everything's round, variations of round. You've got all the delicate lines of the, of the onion in it. Um, let's go see your lighting. I think I might change it <laughs> between the two shots. Oh, you change your lighting a little bit? I might. <laughs> okay. Um, so is, are both of these softbox firing? Yeah. So you got two boxes. But, um, but for this one, um, for, the, for the sauce, I had the strip one trying to illuminate the bottle. Okay. Uh, but yeah, the other one only had one softbox, like the top one. Plus okay, so this one's, just, this one's just the, the softbox. Yeah, and this plus one's the cards. strip light and the softbox? Yes. Got it. Yeah, your softbox is giving you all this great ambient on the shadow side over here. And then the strip light's giving us that brighter edge yeah. down here. Yeah, okay. And your camera was 24 to 105. Do you remember where you were at that? I, I'm going to say you were probably closer to 60 to 105. Yeah, it has, I think the, it, it is there in the comments. Um, yeah. It just says lens is 24 to 105, but that doesn't tell me which of these. Oh, bottom image 105. You did, you do have them. Thank you. So yeah. 60 <laughs> up here and 105 down here. Very good. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Beautiful work. Thank you, Carla. Thank you. How was the papusa? It was very nice. <laughs> Carmen has, wow. Carmen, this is really, this is so you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, they're like little pieces of art. I, I, my neighbor gave me the pomegranate, and uh, I had I had been wanting to photograph it, and so this was like the perfect. Okay, now's the time. And yeah. I, I I really haven't don't know how to open them. I I didn't. Eventually, I saw a YouTube videos and saw that I did it all wrong. But it also gave me the randomness of the of the cut because mm -hmm. I just ripped it apart. I've, I've seen those YouTube videos. I have not been able to make them work. I just end up taking a chisel to the thing, so. I found if you run over them with a motorcycle, that also works too. Just... Then you can't eat the little seeds. Yeah, that's true. And they don't taste- I didn't anymore. realize you could eat the seeds. <laughs> I thought I would just suck the juice, you know, and then spit out the seed. And then I, I during the YouTube videos, I said, oh, I can chew them, okay. Yeah, they're, they're just, these are just beautiful shots. I, I have, they're gorgeous. I got, I got nothing for you, Carmen, except wow. Oh, Just that's wow. sweet. No, okay. I was like, yeah, getting the the backlit was a little um, tricky. The, 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 so that was a difference in the lighting between the one on top and the one on the bottom. Is on the top one, the uh, the top light was stronger, and then on the bottom one, I I reversed it and. The uh, the backlight was yeah. stronger, and you're and, and you're not using a meter, right? Mm, using a light meter, I, I I chimped it in. Chimped it in, okay, because 
you're you're right at that point where if the backlight was any brighter, we'd start oh, losing yeah. these edges. Well, I do have the uh, the high. I do shoot tethered, and um, I have the highlight warning set. So okay. once that starts blinking, I back it off. Yep, you back, just just tether it in like that, and uh, and it's perfect. That's really really pretty. You got to watch your white backgrounds, folks. They got you know they got to be within certain tolerances for them to work really well. What lens are you using there? Oh, that was the, uh, the hundred millimeter. Great. The two eight macro. Lovely shot. Thank you. Really pretty. Really pretty. Uh, Kareen Davis. Is Kareen here? Morning, Don. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. Wow, I love this warm feeling here. All thank you. I was a bit warm. worried about it. No, I just it just it feels it feels like we're in a uh, an old pub or an uh, you know an all wood um, kitchen or something. <laughs> is that yeah, is that where we are indeed? Yeah, I've got an old side table and it's um it's in my bedroom actually, but it's um yeah it's a, it's a lovely wooden table. Yeah, that's really it's really great. I love it. Um, I the side shot. Uh, as you can see, and this is a great example, uh, the side shot, I think you'll agree, just doesn't work. No, no, I, I nope. didn't like it at all. No, it doesn't work. And yet you move the camera up about uh, two and a half feet and it's perfect. We yep. see everything. We don't even know what this is from the side. We see everything in here. We see the cup, we see the handle, we see the handle on that thing. We see all of this design in here that we just miss over here. This is a perfect example of how some things cannot be done both ways. They just, it just doesn't work. This yep. is really, really nice shot. Thank you. And thank you, by the way, for doing, doing this, because I know when you shot this, you said to yourself, no, nah, that ain't it. Yeah, um, I was running out of time. I didn't have time to, to look around for something better. Well, so I'm I glad what you you didn't you didn't go in and try to fix it, because that wouldn't have showed us this really nice thing that we just got to see is how 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 um, challenging some subjects can be. Yeah, by yeah, the no, way, definitely a challenge. Yeah, and by the way, whenever you're shooting for an art director, this is what they want. <laughs> they okay. don't want this one <laughs> unless this is the one that works really well. So you're going to struggle with it, but that beautifully done. Really cool. Thank Todd you. McIntosh. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Todd. How are you? Very well, thank you. All right, so we've got limes. Oranges that are rather green. They're juice oranges. Oh, okay. Okay, and what are we using for light? Oh, window light with sunrise, okay. All right. Yeah, I, I was the kid that was writing his essay on the bus on the way to school, so I was doing this at sunup this morning. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm cool with that. Um, and so you've got this down shot here, yes. and you've got the side shot here. Mm. I think they both work in their own way, don't they? They really do both work in their own way. I like the shine on both of your the oranges look pretty good. Um, I was feeling it was drying out a bit for the down shot. I should have replaced it. If I had to choose one, I'm probably going to choose this one. Me too. Um, it the the orange looks good. Plus this uh, this hard shadow line that you have here. We got a little bit of orange back there. That orange. We've got this one. This this side of this orange is being lit by the bounce off that orange, um, so it really does make a very simple, uh, contrasty, and easy to be seen thing. Where down here, I'm just not crazy about your surface for one thing, and then it gets all crazy in here. You know, all the different shapes and things it gets crazy. This it's like you're getting right into it and saying, "Look, the orange is my star. I'm going to go with it." Um, now in Photoshop, what did you do in, in post? Um, Lightroom, I basically just tweaked the colors a bit. The, the oranges were a little yellower 
like the, the meat of the orange was a little yellower than I wanted and I cloned out a couple of seeds. Okay. Um, I would say go in and paint this or are you good in Photoshop? Half decent. Okay. I would go ahead and cut this orange out in Photoshop, mm -hmm. move it up to a new layer and get that orange to pop. Get that, that orange to really pop. Uh, and yeah. I think it'll, I think it'll make a, a better shot for you. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. All right. Very good. Lael. Hi, Don. Hi, Lael. What are th what are these? Those are spanakopitas. Of course they are. Get a big box at Costco and you cook them up, and they're delicious. Are they like you fry them up or bake them or what? Bake them. Oh. They're 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 phyllo dough with spinach and uh, feta cheese. Ah, cool. Um, your your colors are very nice. They're very muted. Is this supposed to be white? It is white. It's supposed to be yes. Yeah, I don't think it's white. No, it's I not. Think it's. I think you your exposure needs to come up about a half stop. Okie doke. Just about a half. The reason I'm saying that is this this very dark shadow over here. Right. Uh, I love the dark, moody tones that you have. But if we're going to have white sauce in here, we got to get it a little whiter than that. Now, if you crank this thing up a stop and a half to make that white, it's not going to work. Right. It's just not, not going to work. So I would say take it up maybe one click or two clicks. Two clicks would be two thirds of a stop. Uh, take it up there and see what you think. Because the this and your background and your flower is beautiful. So I don't really want to screw with this very much at all. Just want to get these guys so they're a little bit less gray. So if you try that and you don't like what this looks like in Lightroom, right? right. You move it into Photoshop. Cut out this circle here, cut out this down here, move them to a new layer, and tweak just the, the, the cream sauce. Okie doke. Just bring that up. Yeah, your fork looks good, and we got shine on the fork. Thank goodness we got that. I got a highlight here. Um, yeah, it, it's really, really pretty. Where is your light coming from? The top. It's uh, the back. Yeah, kind of top, back. All I have is uh, the hunt. Well, I tried. I have a sixteen twenty eight. I tried to shoot top down with that, and um, but I I shoot it with hundred macro, and I had to. I was trying to get up on a ladder, so I moved it to the floor. That worked better. Got it. Yes. Yep. Shoot on the floor all the time. I have so, a, I, I shoot in a in a place that's only got a eight foot ceiling out in the garage, so right. the floor is my friend. <laughs> yeah. That. That's what I did there. Um, I tilted my, my uh, soft box down and put a grid on it and then uh, put a little two foot by two foot scrim there on floor and then a white card kind of down at the bottom reflecting back into it. Uh, well, it's a really, it's a good shot. It's so pretty in here. Um, that's, and, and I think you know what I'm saying when I say the, it's too gray. I do. Got to pull it up. But I don't want you, I, but I also, Really important, Lyle. I don't want you to pull it to pure white either. Right. Because pure white's going to be too bright for the shot. It's going to be like this beautiful, subtle tones and this <laughs> fluorescent thing. So just get this up a little bit and then post it in the in the uh, page and tag me. Sounds great. I will. Thanks, Don. You bet. Oh, these are cool. Dot. Hi. Hi. Oh, wow. What a big difference in angle, point of view. Wow, my goodness. Black background nestled behind the green. Now they're sitting in and they've got the wood. This is wonderful two images to show what we're talking about here. I like them both, Dot. Mm, thanks. Which one do you like best? The one on the black background. A little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more contrast, a little bit more mystery with all that black back there. But I really do like this. It's the same cutting board, right? Yes, yes, it is. The difference in color. Did you change the light? 
I change change the angle slightly. I use yeah. the big soft box. But you didn't I'll, change you didn't change the light on the box, did you? I mean, uh, no, no, I didn't. I used the black card in front half of the soft box on the black one, um, and I put the soft box directly overhead on the second one. Yeah, wow! It actually even changed the color of the wood, the angle of the light versus the, the angle of the camera. Wow. There we go. Again, so when you, were, when you were shooting straight across, were you laying on your belly like a reptile? I certainly was. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they're both really good, Doc. They're both really good. Just oh, thank you. very modern, really modern sensibility to them. Color looks good. This is very light and airy. This is very moody and saturated. And yet, if I look at the two tomatoes here, tomatoes are pretty much spot on. It's just the change in the angle of light that's changing everything. Change of angle of light to the camera. Yes, yes. Yeah. Beautiful. Really cool. Sarah has, what kind of soup is this, Sarah? Is this potato soup? Broccoli cheddar with bacon. Got it, okay. I like the angle shot. Okay. What do you like? I, I can't, I couldn't tell. I just, that was six of one, half a dozen the other, really. The spoon yeah. drove me batty. <laughs> they always do? Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, I don't know, I, I couldn't tell. I like, I, there's a richness to the top one that, um, and now if, now here's the thing, if you had shown me only this one, I'd be fine with that. So a thousand art director and you said, oh, I'm showing a late flight and you gave me this, I'd be really fine with that. If you give me the two as an art director, I'm probably going to go for this one. I like the richness of it. I like the, the, the highlight, you know, looking across at the soup, we see the, the um, broccoli coming out of the soup this way rather than coming out straight above. Um, both shots would work really well for anything I was doing. Uh, I just think I would probably lean towards the top. And I, other than, other than just the fact that it's, it just appeals to me more, I couldn't tell you any, any reason why. Well, there's no technical reason why. They're both technically good shots. I just lean to the top. What, what lens were you using for this? So the top one, I was using a 24 to 105, and it was at about 60. And the bottom, I used a 35. Okay. We got more of the spoon in the bottom one. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I like them both. I like them both. I would, I would eat both of them would, neither one of them would uh, be a problem for me to use in any a magazine or ad just it would just depend on which one we sold to the client you know yeah. and that's Thanks. what you that's always what you want to do sarah is to give your you know your client options you know yep. i love that yep so uh what's you're not using any of the ambient right you're all no no i just uh, the, i was just trying to kill that reflection in the spoon Got so it. i pulled that backdrop down to cover the window um we got your softbox the behind soft box, the yeah. 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 And then uh, I was, again, the white cards were more to deal with the spoon than they were kicking, I mean, they were kicking light back in, but, uh, yeah. um, you know, that was like a three-sided yeah. card. Yeah. I, and I love what your side, your, your fill cards are doing to this, the petals here in this, in the side shot. I see that better than I do here. It's a little more, yeah. I don't see the, the texture of it. So that's one thing that, that pulled me to the top. Very good. Thank you. Very good. Teresa. Hi, Don. Hi, Teresa. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Good. What is this? Pumpkin something? It's a carrot ginger soup. Carrot, yeah, carrot ginger soup. Okay. Same thing with you, Teresa. Either one of these works really well. Um, your highlight is beautiful in here. But this is beautiful in here as well. I, either one, either one. Um, really nice styling. 
I, I had a spoon in there. I took it out. I couldn't deal with the spoon. <laughs> I, I, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm working on my styling. It's not easy. Well, oh, this is really pretty. I love your, your concentric circles here. Everything works the, the, the garlic and the ginger and the, the little thing work in both settings. Um, the soup just looks great. Thank you. Yeah, really solid. What are you backlighting this? Or? Um, the in the comments, there's a little uh, picture. I have to work on my behind the scenes pictures too. It's just like a really a uh, small LED light. Um, with a LED. Yeah, <laughs> one of those little panels that you order off Amazon. I just set it on my counter. I didn't even have it on a stand. And uh, how powerful is your LED? Uh, I had it cranked up to the yep. to the max. Tell me this: what what was the the price range for it? Uh, well, remember, I'm in Canada, so everything's double. Well, um, things that cost a fifty dollars here in Canada is about eleven point five million, right? That's right. That's, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I don't remember. I've had it for a while, uh, but it's just like new, the newer brand or whatever the a little newer. Yeah. Huh. And uh, just the inside of the five and one reflector just clamped onto a. And that's your set stand. was over here. Yeah, I've tried to keep a little kit near my kitchen so that, um, you know, it's I, I have less resistance to getting stuff done. So that's yeah. my little kit. Yeah, I have three of these little panels I bought from Amazon, like 50 bucks, 60 bucks. I wish. <laughs> and I and I like them a lot, but I have I have not used them uh, very consistently at all. And the other day when I was shooting, I, I grabbed them and I ended up grabbing some strobes instead. But I'm going to have to use them a little more. That's really, really nice. That's super nice. And this light's coming through the scrim then. That's right. Yeah. And you can see on the, the counter on the background, it's like a green marble counter on mm -hmm. the, the picture on the right. I think the scrim didn't it's round right so that little highlight came through with yep not through the scrim yep. which is cool yeah yeah it's cool it breaks it up back there and it's probably doing a little bit of this brightness right in here yeah on these cloves really well done Teresa Thank really you. fun Jerry hi Don hi Jerry look at your uh, breakfast cereal nice both of these shots, Jerry, are totally usable, man. Totally, yeah. I mean, headline up here, copy down here, all kinds of stuff here. Headline up here, massive hero shot right there, a little bit of copy down here. So many things that could be done with either one of these pictures. Uh, as an art director, I'd be super happy with them. I like your little minimalist approach to just one berry up here. On, on it. Um, very cool. Uh, if you're ever doing um, this in milk, um, I will give you all a hint. Don't use milk. Use cream, heavy cream. Um, okay. Because your your um, flakes will float. Where right, in, yeah. In milk, they get soggy real quick and they look terrible. In the heavy cream, they'll actually sit right on top. So yeah, really, really nice. Thank well you. style, well style. Yeah, there's, there's, I'm, I, if I'm going to be picky, I'm not crazy about that color right there. I don't know if that color yeah. works with anything. So what I'm going to tell you to do, and I'm serious, go in there, isolate this, right? And tune it to something that we have over here, something warm and get rid of the green because there's no green on the shot at all. And it just pulls my eye. Same thing over here. Let's make it warm colored. Let's make it golden, whatever. All right. Okay. What is it? It's orange juice, right? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, really nice. What was your lens? So the one on the right was an 80 millimeter macro, and the other one was a, a a kit lens. I think I had it about 50 mil. I think. They're both crop sensor. They're, they're. It's just really good work. Man, it's really good work. It looks good. It looks healthy. It looks fresh. Color is great. 
Um, the whites look nice and natural. There's nothing, nothing wrong with either one of these shots. Good compositions. Thank you. And Mark Lunn. All right, Mark, there you go. You that fixed better. it. You fixed it. Yes, sir. We got the juice with the, the bubbles, got rid of the water. Uh, really nice with your, your, um, your little strobe coming in from the side. Wow. You nailed it, man. Good. I, I didn't like that wood background either, so I had a roll of contact paper that I used for the surface. Uh-huh. All of this works up in here. Um, so, do you have a behind the scenes? Mark? Yep. Yeah. So, Mark is using a softbox through a scrim to get his overall lighting. And what his plan is, is to get the shot to look really good without the addition of the speed light. And then you took a speed light. How, how, we like 128th or 64th or what? Uh, it's on the behind the scenes. I don't know. The ref, the Octabox overhead was at a 30 second plus seven, just to give like a very, very light overall exposure. Right. Then the one coming through the scrim, I had at a quarter power. And okay. then the reflector over on the right hand side. I had at, uh, oh, actually, that was, uh, I think, half power. Yeah, that was a half power. Okay. So you're, you, you're using a, a gridded strobe for your... For the shadows. Shadows. Uh, those shadows are probably only a half stop mm -hmm. under. So uh, the shot, this shot would have looked fine without them. But uh, without that, but I really, really like that. Um, hitting the cinnamon, I think that's really nice. I think the shadow of the glass going through the, the, the sugar here is really nice. Everything about the shot is, is, is keeper stuff there. Good. Yeah, I moved the strobe so that way it would, it would go between the cranberries and the orange juice and have that beam of light going on to the cinnamon with that highlight there. Kind of that, that, where the flare is at on the cinnamon is intentional because I feel like that bright spot helps pull your eye back into the middle of the. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it, uh, it's light years better than your first attempt. Good. Light and I, I also better. redid the orange, yeah. the orange peel. Looks really, really well done. Thank you, Mark. Awesome. That's real good follow through. And Bonnie Mitchell. Lemons and look at that. So, um, is this one straight down? Is this a straight down, Bonnie? Bonnie? Yes. Can you hear okay. me? Yes. So this is down, yes. and this is slightly to the side. Yeah. Yes. It looks a little washed out there, but. I'm okay. I'm okay with your exposure. I think it, it's nice and bright and airy. Uh, I really like the fact that you kept your your lemons nice and bright and cheery through here, and the same way over here. They look great. Um, this one is a little bit dark, so what you do is you go in the light room, paint it, pull it up a little bit. Same with this one. Just pull it up a little bit so we get a nice little bit brighter. Okay bright, shinier lemon there. Uh, this looks good. You got the glass coming down, which is giving you a little bit of shadows, which is fine because it's sort of giving the light something to bounce against, giving the eye something to, I love this little dark area in here, and then have the lemons pop out of the dark. Uh, which one do I like better? I think I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to like this one better, and it's only because that pink right there doesn't go with the red it doesn't go with this red here uh, uh, but okay that's really so minor bonnie it's really minor i'm being very very picky i do like the square composition here i think it works really well this circle that circle then we have that half circle um mimicked here we have it mimicked here we have it mimicked here and we have it mimicked all the way around here so when you look at it compositionally, it's just really tight. 
it's really fun how you've kept that same shape going all through the composition, even to the point of having this be a half round. Your whole composition is a half round. Good job. Thank you. Solid job. Yeah. What did you? What Thank did you, you. What did you use to shoot this with? What's your, what's your lens? Uh, Canon 60D. Mm -hmm. It's a 2470 at about 40 millimeters. Okay. That just works. Good job. Good. Job. Aren't you? Aren't you? You guys. Thank you. Flat? Aren't you glad I'm not critiquing the behind the scenes shots? Yes. <laughs> that would be so unfair, wouldn't it? Well, you know, your behind the scenes are a little dark over here. And maybe if we, no, we're not going to do that. Uh, oh, Audi, yummy sandwich. Look at that. Mm. Audi, are you here? Audi. Oh, Audi is not here. Okay. Um, this looks really good up here, Audi. I really like this a lot. We get all of our, all of your great uh, ingredients for the sandwich looks great. The lower one though, I don't like this back here. I would just crop it right there. That's your shot. That's your shot. Boy, this thing gives me memories. I, I, I had to shoot a 12 foot submarine for a restaurant once. Man, that was a on on uh, eight by ten, by the way, on eight by ten. So I had I ended up with a picture that looked there was the the eight by ten chrome, and here was the sandwich. That's what it looked like. Well, nothing around it, but it, then they cut it out. It was going to be used in uh, and I thought it was going to be used in a billboard or something. It was used in an ad, and literally, ladies and gentlemen, they printed it about this big on the top of a flyer. I was so disappointed. Can you, I can't tell you how long it took to put the, the little tomatoes, so they're all coming out here. Out of food styles, we worked all day on that shot. And they ran it about a quarter of an inch tall. I right, this is really nice, but like I said, get rid of the top of this. We don't need to see that. Your sandwich looks very nice. Your lighting looks good. Let's see what you did with the lighting. Oh yeah, there we go. This is great. That's just really great right here. It's a great idea. Uh, bringing that light that back down, kicking, kicking it into the front on a shot like this, where it's so important, so important to get that, um, that light kicking into here. Now, this part of your sandwich needs more pop. Not your fault. Digital doesn't pop. Digital in shadows is weak. It's flat. Pop this up in post. Your bread looks good. I wouldn't worry about the bread, but I would pop this front up in post for sure. It looks, it looks really good. Oh, and that's it. All right. Super. Well, I hope you guys great. enjoy spending most of your Saturdays hanging around a Zoom meeting. Um, <laughs> Hi, Don. Sorry, I, I arrived late. I think I missed mine, so I'll catch the, the review. With the review. Uh, Alex, uh, I remember, I don't remember your shot, but I remember being uh, just knocked out by it. It was oh, really you. a beautiful photograph, and I say so um, in it, yep. on it. So, yeah, Thank just you. lovely. It was the ones that looked like they were straight out of the magazine. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, Don, for people that are, are struggling with the post, just to remind people about Flern having that 30 days to Photoshop, that 30 days of Photoshop. Oh, yeah. Let me put, I'll put that up on next week's assignment on the assignment page. I'll put that, a link to that. That is a, that's free. He's doing that free, correct? Yeah, it's just um, go to his YouTube channel. He's got a playlist that's 30 days of Photoshop. Yeah, if you do those 30 days of Photoshop, if you did three a day, it's three a day. And remember that don't just watch them. Watch them and then do it. And then watch it again and then do it. You do that, you'll have Photoshop down 
pretty well. And then after that, it's just what you want to do with it. You won't be trying to figure out where to go with Photoshop. You'll already know. It's really great. And, and uh, Aaron's a wonderful teacher, just a really great teacher. So, Don, uh, Don, you wanted somebody to remind you about uh, oh, marketing, I believe. Yes. Okay, here's something. Now, this is only for those of you who want to do this as a business. If you're not doing it as a business and just having fun with it, it's not going to make any difference. But for those of us who are doing it as a business, prior to about five or six years ago, we were artists who searched for a way to market ourselves to have the opportunity to photograph. So we we as a group we hated marketing photographers always go oh i hate marketing i just hate marketing but we had to do it to beg the gatekeepers you know we we're sending out postcards every week every month every sending emails please give us a shot to have an opportunity to shoot for a client well it's flipped now photographers create content and content is all marketing today. All marketing mm -hmm. is content. We create content. So in reality, we are now marketers of the content we create. So where it was artists first, till five years ago, we were artists. And with a lowercase marketing, we are now marketers with a lowercase a. If we don't understand that, we're going to get shot down. Photographers in, you know, in 1990, when they'd come and hire you to do a photograph, it was either going to be in a magazine, on a billboard, or in a television commercial, right? Or a brochure, which is pretty much the same thing as a magazine. That's it. Now we have Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, um, Snap. TikTok, Pinterest. On, Pinterest, on and on and on to infinitum. They don't need four shots a year. They need four shots or five shots a week. We own that content. We're photographers. Everybody can make a photograph. Everybody, because they can grab their phone, a little point and shoot and make a photograph. We are the ones who make photographs that stand above what everybody else does. We're marketers, our okay. product that we're marketing is, is photography, and we are looking for people who want the opportunity to work with us. That's the difference. That's a really, really big difference. So that's where we are. That's what's, that's what's changed out there. And a lot of photographers don't want that to happen. They want to stay being artists, but it's not going to work. You're going to have to be a marketer, big time, big time. And where we used to shoot four, to, four shots a week, we're now shooting 40 shots a week. Every photographer I know is doing uh, big numbers of pictures, whether they're library shoots, Instagram shoots, uh, shoots for uh, uh, collateral material and on and on and the clients aren't going well we need a picture of this for our brochure they're saying we need a bunch of pictures of this we don't know what we're gonna do with them yet that might be on a brochure it might be on a website it might be a blog ad it might be a, 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 a Pinterest thing it might be part of a, a PDF that we're doing for clients we just need a shot of this and that's where we're doing volume it's really important to understand the difference that's changed. It's really important because everything is visual today. The only thing I can think of that's not visual would be podcasting, which is a huge market. But even podcasts have web pages that have visuals on them to try to get somebody to click to the podcast. So our entire market is visual now and we have to own it uh, and, be, and be the leaders of it. Or we'll get, or we'll um, we'll end up behind. So, well, all right, folks. Thank you so much for coming uh, and being here. If uh, if you came in late and you didn't see your your image, it's up there. Uh, I I reviewed all the images, whether you were here or not. Uh, if you're watching the video, 
if you think, well, did Don do my video? Yes, he did. So check it out. Uh, I will have some new stuff on next week's assignment, end of day today. End of day today. There's going to be some Lightroom stuff. There's going to be a couple of links to other things. So um, before you start shooting for next week, kind of hold off unless you already know what you're going to do uh, and uh, for that. So everybody have a great rest of your weekend. Love you guys. Take care. Bye, Don. Bye-bye. Thank you, Don. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye.